So an update on lost footage that's probably never going to be found as my dumbass saw that when I went to edit the original version of this video, I had somehow deleted all the footage, so... whoops. Today, we are going to rank all five Evanescence albums from worst to best. Why five, you might ask? I thought it was four. Well, they count Synthesis as an official studio album, so yeah, we're going to be counting that in this list here. And just a disclaimer, as I always say, just because I may say that a certain album is the worst one in the discography, that doesn't necessarily mean I hate it, it's just my least favorite record from said band or artist that I'm talking about. So now that you have this disclaimer, here's what I think is the worst Evanescence album. Synthesis, to me, I mean, for what it is, I think it's perfectly fine. It's a compilation album of redone songs in a more orchestral and electronic way. It's why I don't necessarily typically see it as a studio album most of the time. It just kind of crosses my mind. And, I mean, it's just one of those ones I have to be in the mood for. It's not one that I can just pop in and enjoy right away. I mean, I guess the two new songs that appeared on here, High, Low, and Imperfection, were nice, and I really, really loved the redone version of Bring Me to Life. I feel like without the rapper on it, it actually was a little bit better. It was kind of like their reimagined version, how they maybe wanted it in the first place, or Amy Lee wanted it in the first place, minus the, the rapping part. So you know what? It has nice moments, but when it comes to Evanescence albums that I actually go back and listen to something off of, this one just doesn't do it for me. I think it's because I got excited because it was their first album in six years, but then finding out it was just redone songs, you're like, oh, great, cool, because this is what I wanted. second worst one is self-titled, and you're probably like, wait a minute, how could you rank their new album, The Bitter Truth, over an album that's 10 years old? Well, I think it really did it for me, really made me realize how much I forgot about the self-titled record when I went back to do my top 10 Evanescence songs, because I was able to remember stuff off, you know, Fallen and the Open Door, but when it came to the self-titled, I had to go back, and there was some songs I listened to where I was like, Okay, I do remember that one. That one popped up eventually somewhere down the line, but then there was just songs that I just plain didn't know. And it was like the singles didn't really resonate. There wasn't that many memorable deep guts to me. It was okay for what it was. I mean, What You Want is a nice kickoff. Sick kind of has that old Evanescence feeling that you're used to, and the change is nice. But again, I just find it to be the least memorable studio album of original material by Evanescence because even after 10 years, I almost completely forgot that it existed at all. This is where the controversy might come in because I have their new album, The Bitter Truth, in as their third best album, which I know what you're thinking, isn't it a little too early to be ranking this album this high because it just came out? I can understand your argument there, but in the end, I find this way more superior than what the self-titled and synthesis were. As those two records just kind of pass me by, I remember sitting down and listening to this record and going, oh yeah, I think, um, I think I'm, I'm back in with the whole thing. It's been 10 years since we've heard original material from this group, and they just knocked it away. The technical first track after the intro, Broken Pieces Shine, and The Game Is Over, just going back-to-back -back on each other in the album, the two best songs, might I add, was just so, like, oh my god, so, so great. Some of the heavier moments, along with Blind Belief, which is a nice little finisher for the album, where you thought they would finish it off kind of soft, but no, they actually go out of their way to just be amazing again. Plus, there's other songs on there. I think one of the ones I really love, too, is Better Off Without You. Just some of the instrumental moments on that, too. It really makes you just go back to their new metal days and appreciate what they used to be. And the fact that even 18 years after their debut album came out, that Amy Lee is still able to sing like that. Like, come on, man. She's just, she's not declining. She's not even getting better. She just is who she is. And the instrumentation, also some of the finest I think I've heard on an Evanescence album. This is where fans might be 
divided as to what the top two would be. But I have their debut album, Fallen, at number two, and I get it, I completely understand. When you have an album with the first four tracks are going under, which is still my favorite Evanescence song to date, Bring Me to Life, and then you have Everybody's Fool and My Immortal, I mean, of course, of course, you know you're gonna have a good album on your hands, but again, I think this one has aged the worst of the five. Again, don't get me wrong, it's not bad, it's really good, or else I wouldn't have it as their second best album. But when you look back at when this album came out in 2003, New Metal was still at its peak and doing its thing, and I just think that some of the sounds from this record and some of the instrumentation being raw and gritty, it, you look back and go, yeah, you can definitely tell when this album was made. It's not like one of those universal ones where it sounds like it can be made in any era. No, you specifically know. Anywhere between like 1997 and 2003, that's when this was made. Plus, it just has one of their most overplayed songs, I think, Bring Me to Life Again. I don't hate the song, but it's like Paramore with Riot. It was their first single to have them hit big, and I think people just see it as the best thing they've done when it's like, no, not really. I think even after in that song they were able to prove themselves with things a lot better so really it's that reason that this album only hits number two because a lot of the songs on here are some of their most overplayed ones but either way still great If you're keeping track, number one has to be their follow-up to their debut album, The Open Door, in 2006. For me, this one's more personal, because I was eight years old when this came out. This was really when I started, like, paying attention, like I had remembered how big they were beforehand, and seeing that they were finally going to follow up this album, it was like, oh, okay, we'll see what they got from round two, and they definitely, definitely did not disappoint. I think Way to the World, a nice kickoff, Call Me When You're Sober, of course, the song, Amy Lee wrote about her then ex-boyfriend, the lead singer of Seether, who I'm not sure who his name is, but I know they dated for a while, and he was a very bad alcoholic and drug addict, so they kind of split and whatnot, and this song is about him. Plus, I think Snow White Queen is a very underrated Evanescence song, still one of my favorites. And then, of course, you know, Lithium's on there as well. I have to, you know, shout that one out. To me, I think this was the band finding themselves more creatively. They weren't necessarily new metal anymore, that element was slowly there, but you hear even more of the orchestral moments kick in. Amy Lee's vocals, to me, get better now that she's in her 20s. It just, it felt more mature than their debut record, and it was one of those ones where you can say, Evanescence completely avoided the sophomore slump, like there was no question as to, you know, where they would go from there. And then after this, there was kind of, you know, a lot of things happening in the band, bandmates left, new ones came in, and it took them a while to follow the sub. But I mean, really, when you have a one-two punch of Fallen and the Broken Door, it's really, really hard to just kind of keep adding on to that, and the open door to me will just forever be probably their best record they will ever put out with material because of the deep cuts. When you talk about best album deep cuts, this one has it. So yeah, that's it for ranking every Evanescence album from worst to best. I'd love to see your ranking in the comments below. What do you think is the worst Evanescence album and the best one? And yes, you can count Synthesis because again, it is technically a studio album. That's it for me. Stay safe out there, wear your mask, and until then, I will catch you all in the next one.